Hi, I'm Amy Dunker at Clark University. Welcome to Trumpet Quick Lessons. I'd like to talk to you about practice tips. When I was a younger student player, I had no idea how to go about practicing. Nobody really talked to us about that. They just say, well, here you go, go practice. I'm all right, I'll go practice. Um, but today I'd like to really look into some real strategies that will help you do this efficiently and get more out of it and move ahead faster. First thing to do is look up all the terms on the page. Fast, slow, whatever those terms are, and also look up a little bit about the composer. When were they born? What kinds of music did they write? What else did they write? Um, what other types of music were written around that same time? You might even want to go on YouTube and just listen to random pieces by that composer. The next thing to really think about is, what do you want to say stylistically and musically? What's the style? What's the dynamics? How do you get to and from the climactic points? Plan them into your practice. They're not afterthoughts. Um, a lot of people wait to the end. They practice all the notes and all the rhythms and what, what. And then, oh yeah, I gotta put those crescendos and decrescendos and dynamics in. Practice them from the beginning. Put all that thought and all that into your practice from day one. Um, one of the things you also wanna be aware of is that Musicality should determine the technique, not the technique determining your musicality. So if you have a musical idea, something you want to express and you can't quite get there, bring your technique up to that rather than saying, eh, I can't play that way, so I'm not going to do it. Bring your technique up to your musical idea. Uh, don't let your cell phone distract you or other devices. It's way too easy to just, okay, beep, I'm going to glance at my phone. Ooh, I'm going to glance at my phone. You'd be surprised how much time gets wasted that way. I mean, I'm not even of the cell phone generation, really, and I'm surprised how much time I waste on those kind of things. Um, practice slowly. Speed up in small increments. And you want to practice slowly and to a point where you can play absolutely everything through at the same tempo perfectly. So consistently at a perfect tempo, then you move it up one little notch, use a metronome, one little notch each time. You'll be surprised at how fast it goes because you're practicing for perfection and each little notch will go a lot faster than just jumping in. Um, practice similar sections together. So if it's the same musical idea at the beginning and the same musical idea at the end, practice the beginning and say what you want to say. Then go to the end and practice that. Look for the little differences, the little things that are going on, but practice those similar passages the same. Uh, break down problematic passages into small chunks. So often I, I see people that, that just read through and then they just read through the phrase, read through the phrase, read through the phrase, read through the phrase. And this wastes enormous amounts of time. For instance, if you have a passage that goes like this. And you mess up, let's say, the second 16th, then you want to go, the second group of 16ths, then you want to go. So you want to work them out cleanly and then put them back into the passage. So break it down into that little chunk. Why practice all that other stuff when you can do it? You wanna get right focused on the problem area and fix it. Mark the page. If you miss an accidental, only miss it once. Mark it. If you miss a repeat, whatever, or if you think you might miss it, mark it. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard Younger players say, well, yeah, but I look at the prose music and there's nothing marked on there. Well, oftentimes it's because, one, they've developed a lot of technique over the years. Two, it may not even be the first time they've practiced this. It's maybe a replacement book for an old book that either graduated with a student or self-destructed over all the years of practice. And some of these things that they will be working with students, they've played for 40 or 50 years. So generally you won't see as much marking on those on those pages. But if you look and they're going to go sight read a show or do a show, they're marking like crazy. Um, some days practice the beginning first. Other days start at the end or start at the middle. Oftentimes we always start at the beginning. Always start at the beginning. So the beginning is really strong, but the middle and ending aren't as strong. And you want that to be an even amount of strength. You want it to be a great piece from beginning to end. Um, set practice goals each day and write them down. I keep a little notebook and I encourage my students to keep a little notebook, okay? Today I practiced measures 37 through 
52 on etude number seven, measure 43. I worked out problems. I should double check that again because just to make sure it's solidified my, that I've, I've really got it under my fingers. Then I went on and did my scales or I worked on minor scales today, all that kind of stuff. Then the next section, I go right next to each one, one of those things and say, what do I want to work on in my next practice? So that when I get in there, I'm not wasting time saying, oh, where was I? What, what did I do? I open this little notebook and go, that's what I need to do. And I get it done. So it just really maximizes your timing and keeps you well organized. I also try to practice all the things I'm working on every day. Uh, I've seen people that have, you know, work on one thing diligently, and then they go on to the next thing, and then they go on to the next thing. And by the time they get on to the third thing, they've kind of lost some of their skills on the first thing. Just over time, it's just a normal human process. So make sure you're touching bases with everything each practice session. Even if it's, okay, I own this, I just need to read through it, or I just want to go through a couple of real tricky passages that I, that I, you know, give me some problems that I've had to work on. So touch each piece every day. Uh, be able to perform the entire work clearly and with a metronome. Be able to go straight through it with a metronome at whatever tempo and play everything cleanly. It gives you confidence when you go in to perform it. It gives you confidence when you go into audition on those things. Most anxiety really comes from not really being sure, not really being prepared. But if you can do this several times in a row, you walk in there saying, yeah, I can do this. Um, and then be able to take the metronome away and keep your tempo and stay in time. And that's your final, final goal of, of the product and make the musical ideas. Um, I can't I can't overstate the need for a metronome. Uh, it's one of those instruments that, you know, we all fight, oh, the metronome, the metronome. And when I was a student, I was like, oh, I hate playing with the metronome. It's so hard. It's so difficult. It's so difficult because I'm starting with the metronome on passages that I'm learning now that are difficult for me. Anyhow, step back the first few times you work with the metronome. Just play quarter notes with the metronome. Da, 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 da. And then play a scale, do, re, mi, with the metronome. Then play eighth notes Then until you get really comfortable with it and then go back to your music. Because if you start out where you're having difficulties, it's gonna be twice as hard to get used to the metronome. So go back and just, you know, spend a week getting used to playing with a metronome, you know, making more difficult things each day as you go so that you've built up to using the metronome on the passes, passages that you want. And it'll help you to keep from being so discouraged about dealing with the metronome. At a certain point, it'll be comforting to have the metronome because you know where you're at and you know you're practicing efficiently and successfully. Uh, one technique I learned from a professor of mine, Dr. Robert Spring, who used to teach at Arizona State University, a fabulous clarinetist, um, was a seven pennies. He put seven pennies on his, on his stand. And each time he played it right, he moved pennies from the right-hand stack to the left-hand stack. If he could play it seven times in a row and all seven pennies got to the left, great, he could move on. But let's say he got three pennies the fourth time he messed it up, all the pennies go back. He had to start all over with the seven pennies. But what that does is ensure that you've practiced it correctly more times than you've practiced it incorrectly. Oftentimes I've seen people that will, you know, play the passage, make a mistake, play the passage, make a mistake, fix it, and then move on. Well, they've practiced it wrong more times than they've practiced it right. So the seven pennies is a way to get you to make sure that you're practicing it more times correctly than incorrectly. I hope all these ideas helped. Happy trumpet playing.